motion that we approve the minutes for February 13th, 2024, February 26th, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mrs. Martinez. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. And now we have some celebrations. I believe the first one is girls basketball. Yes, good evening board president, board members, and superintendent. Tonight we'll have some <coughs> celebrations of student achievements. <coughs> If Coach uh, Craig Foster, our <coughs> athletic director, will come up and recognize our student achievements. I'd like to just say a few words before I bring uh, Coach Lopez and her team up. We just want to thank you for the support. I know I'm new to the district, and I came in right in the middle of basketball season. Last board meeting, we were heading off to the playoff game. And just to watch both our girls and our boys compete is something special. And I know we get to see that every day, and you guys get to see that when we get out on the courts or in their respective venues. But just want to say thank you to that, and, and especially thank you to the coaches, their staffs, and our athletes. So at this time, we'll have Coach Lopez. She'll come up and introduce her staff and the girls. I know some of the members were unable to make it, both boys and girls, but we want to recognize those who are here. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. I'm Coach Lopez. Um, I, my girls were on their way. I have two of you. Come on. Come on. Come with me. Come on. Um, <laughs> I know, they all are better than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my staff is made up of Coach Fraga, that's the honor of Coach Fraga, and Coach Uribe, and Coach uh, Sarah Torres, she, she's a sophomore, so she wasn't able to come today. But uh, and, uh, our team consists of, uh, this year our numbers were a little low, but we had 10 girls, starting with my, my point guard, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna Gonzalez, my number one. Then we had Rihanna, Gonza uh, Rihanna Castillo, we had Alessandra Torres, the, I thought Alessandro was going to make it today. Then we had uh, Daniel Saldivar. We had uh, Presi uh, Pre Becerra. We had Catherine Pollock here. And we had Ale Elena Benjamin, my senior, and Alayla Rodriguez. Uh, together, they, we managed to become by district champs. And we went off to area. We lost there, but that's OK. They had a tough game. And like I said, they, they uh, were awarded some uh, all district Awards, all district selection. Defensive player of the year was Alessandra Torres. First team was Rihanna Gonzalez. Second team all district, Elena Benjamin and Daniel Saliva. And honorable mention, Clarissa Diaz and Rihanna Castillo. It was very hard for these awards to be uh, awarded to these girls, and we have to compete with the rest of the district. And the other, the other coaches have to vote for the girls. I just present my girls, and then they vote. So it's very hard to get these, some of these awards, and they did excellent. 
everybody. I'm uh, Coach Leo Gomez. First of all, thank you for inviting us over. Uh, we, we appreciate it. And I just wanted to share some, some gratitude for, for some people while I'm up, while I'm up here. Um, thank you for the parents and community who, who helped fill up the stands during the season. Uh, that support does not go unnoticed, and, and I know the kids love it when, when um, they, see, they see you guys up in the stands. Um, thank you for my managers and assistant coaches, and um, I, I I'm going to try to not leave anybody out. Andrew Guajardo, Joe Charles, uh, Coach Cisneros, who's coaching baseball right now, Coach Cortez, uh, Coach Romero, and, and of course, uh, Coach Albert Castaneda for helping to run the, pro, the basketball program. And, and of course, thank you to all these kids. I mean, they work their tail off every day to win back-to-back uh, by -back district titles, and, and that's just a testament to their hard work. And, and um, seeing these guys come together throughout the season, it, it's been a joy to watch. And um, I, just want, I, I tell them all the time, and, and I'll tell you guys, I'm very, very blessed to be able to coach these young men. I, I'm, I'm very, very proud of the growth that you guys have shown as players, and most importantly, as people. And so, without further ado, let me just call them up one at a time to be recognized. So when I call you guys, uh, Kyle, Aguila. You are captain as well in your first team all district selection. Noah Rosales. First team all district selection. Austin Vaughn, another one of our captains. Our defense player of the year, Evan Lopez. Uh, our uh, freshman, Jake Martinez. Uh, he's not here, uh, but he did a great job as well. Uh, Jaden Martinez. Uh, Devin Sanchez. Great job, Devin. I will mention as well. Uh, Sammy Guajardo, great kid, not here right now, but uh, he did a great job for us also. Also, uh, let me get Jaden Castaneda, also known as Kyle. Some other kids that, that are not here, not able to make it. Uh, Jordan Martinez, Dominic Trevino, Justin Alfaro, and of course our filmer, Andrew Guajardo, and of course uh, Coach Cortez, who you, you kindly come up here. Uh, my JV coach. And, uh, like I said, guys, we, we appreciate everything you've done. You guys work your tail off, and, and uh, what else can I say? But I love you guys. Well. We're going to be seeing all behind them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. If y'all can get down to the bottom. In this case, more to the front. That's what I'm saying. Get the board back and go in the front of the side. Are they going to the back? Thank you, sir. I left one, one for that. If I can say one more thing, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, he's not here also, but Ray Garza did a great job for us. And of course, uh, thank you, Coach Foster, also for, for the support. <laughs> 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 Your six and seven, we saw those math scores increase. We, we also have an area of concern in the area of uh, fifth grade science. That is still a concern for us uh, as a district. So one of the things that we did, uh, uh, we, we gave an assignment to our principals, we gave an assignment to our teachers on uh, one of the days, well actually it was the day that we didn't have school when the towers came down. We basically gave them an assignment to do. And what the principals and the teachers and the grade levels did is they looked at all their students. They focused on the students that were going backwards. The students that are going backwards are the students that are not showing growth. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we identified who those students are and what are we doing to help them. We also looked at our students that are meets. Uh, the, the data shows that we don't have a, a lot of masters, but when we do compare it to the last benchmark, we did get more meet masters and more meets. So the only way to do that is to look at our meets to see what we can do for that population to increase them to become masters. 
So that is something that they did. I know some principals are here, they worked on it for about a half a day, then they continued it the rest of the day. It was working together as a grade level, working together as, uh, even as, as uh, elementary schools, they were able to meet together. So they, they came up with a plan, they submitted the plan, and then this past week, uh, last week, they shared it with Mrs. Fotis at one of our principals meeting, the strategies and the interventions that they are doing to, uh, to help uh, the students. Something else that we have done as a district is our migrant, uh, Mr. Cortez, our migrant director, Mrs. Loredo, Loredo also have, um, and Ms. Aide Rodriguez, have also looked out for contracted services to provide that as an assistance uh, for, our, for our schools and, and to help our students. So one of what we've been doing is we've been going back and forth looking at the rosters, looking at the names of the students, making sure that they are in a, in a tutoring group, make sure that they are included, uh, make sure that they are also part of ACE. If not, we're making phone calls uh, to make sure that the students are staying or that they do get placed uh, with a tutor. Uh, again, we also have uh, contracted services that we've also provided for some of the schools, not all of them. Uh, the other thing that we have done as a CNI department is we saw, we've also reached out to our schools to let them know that we are available to go and assist them in any way that we can, which includes tutoring as well. So we do have schedules uh, for math, for reading, uh, and for social studies. Those are the areas that we are addressing right now. Uh, I will say that uh, our focus is at the secondary. The new way that we are being held accountable, uh, we're looking at uh, our secondary. Our secondary is has more scores, there's more uh, tests administered there, so that weighs more. It's, it's referred to as the probability. Mm -hmm. So because that is our bulk of it, that is what we are focusing on right now. Uh, we've also reached out and we, we found free stuff uh, pilot programs in the areas of science and math to also assist us, uh, or to assist our teachers and assist our principals uh, as well. The other thing that we've done as a district or as a CNI department is we went out for the LASSO grant. The LASSO grant is the Learning Acceleration Support Opportunity, known as LASSO. And we were uh, blessed enough to receive two parts of that grant, which is the uh, math licenses and math uh, plan. Uh, we know that math is an area of concern, so one of the decisions that we made as a district is we need to basically look at our math curriculum to see what we're doing. So this company is going to come in, they're going to, uh, they're going to set up the framework, they're going to set up the vision, the framework, uh, uh, set up a system to address the area of math. We are in year one of that, that will get started this coming school year, but they've already issued, they have an issue, but they will give us our licenses this school year so that we can start using it. So we are addressing the area uh, of math as well. Uh, again, we did see an increase from benchmark one to benchmark two in some areas. Uh, math was an area that went down. I did reach out to a district. They, did, they had the same thing. For some reason, their third, the fourth, and the fifth grade math scores also took a dip uh, as well. If we look at comparison to last year at this time, because we also do that, we want to see where were we last year at this time and where are we this year. So we noticed our meets and masters, again, with an exception of third grade, our meets and masters are going up from 15 to 40 many times. And so we also gave you that comparison and this one so you can see from last year to this year and not just from first benchmark to second benchmark. So if you look at that first page that you have there, you have some that are in green. Right now, the ones that are in green, that is the projected letter score for that campus or that school. Uh, the first one that you see is either going to be either domain one or domain two. Uh, the state of the, under the new accountability, the state is going to look at which one of the domains is better. If it's domain one, then they'll go with domain one. If it's domain two, they'll take that one into consideration and considering uh, what letter grade uh, the campus is going to get. And just a reminder, right now we still have accountability under litigation. We were told it was going to be sometime in February. It's now the middle of March and we still don't have last year's, last year's accountability. Yes. And, and the, the benchmark that we used was a release test, so not everything had been covered. And so we also look at that to see what still needs to be covered, how did they do on what we have taught, and how what else do we need to spiral in. So we look at many things like that and they're finishing that up. And that's what the principals discussed as well. So benchmark two is the only and the first release test that the state has given us. Uh, benchmark number one was a, uh, a little mini practice test that they came up with, but that was not issued to students. So our students had never seen that or it had never been given to students. It was something that they put together and they said, here, you can try this. The previous year, the CNI department under uh, Dr. Kampu created benchmark one. 
and benchmark to. So it was something that we came up with because there was nothing out there. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it was from practice tests. I don't want to confuse you, but uh, benchmark number one was one that was released by the state, but it was a practice one that had not been administered to students. But benchmark two was last year's uh, yes. release test. If we want to go back a year further, it, it was a different test, different accountability. But when you look at benchmark two from last year, we're doing way better this year than we were last year to benchmark two. Uh, are there any questions? Any questions? I'm sorry, um, what is that? Which one? It's an R L. Reading language arts. Oh. Yes. Now remember that the test <coughs> should be just reading, but now they've added the essay component from third grade all the way up. So that's a little different than what you've seen in the past. And I know I asked you this question, sir, but the next round of real test is in? Uh, we're going to see math. April? Math is going to be the next one that we're going to see. Okay. Uh, math, the dates are going to be uh, starting April 20th through the 24th. But I think one campus is on the 30th as well. So now it's a window. So they have right. a window of, of when they're going to test. Two, 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 yes, yes. So you have a month basically with all this intensive tutoring, yes, help. That was one of the things that the principals created with their teachers, blitzes, tutoring, right. interventions, pull in, push out, things of that nature. So hopefully this, these scores will improve for the real test. Um, yes, ma'am. And I'm, I'm just speaking from, from my child. I know when Sadie was taking her math, she was very nervous. And after, after school, I asked her, well, how did you do? She goes, Mom, I don't think I did very well. And I said, why? And then she says, because I couldn't remember some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think just reviewing what was done in the fall would have helped her, you know, kind of feel a little bit more comfortable. And uh, and I said, well, this is why you have to learn it, not memorize it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is with the release test, they presented <coughs> information, or tested on information that hasn't been taught. Yeah. And maybe that's what it was. Well, I mean, I I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I was going to say, in the fall, she was okay, but it was in the spring because it had stuff from the fall. I guess oh, where, I where she was already tested on it. She couldn't remember. Oh, and that. one of the things in third grade I talked to the neighborhood principals about is sometimes the way we teach it is not the, to the oh, level mm -hmm. of difficulty. And so we have Sharon Wells. We need to make sure that we supplement Sharon Wells because alone Sharon Wells doesn't test like to the level of the difficulty that they need to. Mm -hmm. so. I, I do have a comment though. Yes. Um, I, I was looking at the uh, benchmark one um, in the high school and benchmark two, the most recent one. And I do see, like, I, I look, like on benchmark, we didn't have any meets or masters in the algebra one, but we had 15 and that was met in the meet. So there is, you could see, even though we're not where we want to be at, at the high school level, but I can see there's no zeros. Not, not passing, as yes, you right. can see in the meets and the masters grow. Big time. Yes. How does that impact like the overall well, score? One, one of the things that, that that's one of the things that the principals and the, the teachers worked on. So now they're looking at those 15, and we're basically looking at okay, how many students are close to becoming masters, and we're also looking, we're treating all the students the same whether they're meets, a masters, or approaches. What is that one area that they still need that can put them over the edge to become masters? Even in all areas, even in approaches, you, you gained a lot of kids that, that did not pass before. That did not pass before, but they're not over here compared to you know 80, 93. You got more kids um, getting closer, closer that growth. I know when Ms. Loder shared these scores with me, I basically said that this is very encouraging. You know, so hopefully with all these intense. Uh, tutoring, whatever is happening with each particular child, hopefully all this will bump them up to the next level when the real test, you know, does come around. So, I mean, I, I was, I basically told her, this is very encouraging. And I was talking as a principal, not as a board member. So I've been through this before. Um, I wanted to, um, I'll follow up with Ms. Montalvo. Uh, do they offer, like, um, studying uh, methods um, that would encourage the students to, you know, come back from the beginning of the semester, the year. Right, right now, that, that free thing that we have right now, ma'am, it's a pilot program, that is something that can be used to go back and review, to go back and inspire what was done in the first semester, the first, second, third, six weeks. That is something that could be used uh, definitely within that, uh, in that math class. Any other questions of Mr. Floyd? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good report, sir.
the next item under information items is report from a board member on the Tasby Government's Camp for 2024. Uh, yes, thank you very much um, for, um, for this opportunity. As many of you know that I've been on the board for forever, uh, so you would think that I go to conferences and don't see anything new. But we're living in a very interesting time right now and new challenges are facing public education. So I was very, very encouraged uh, by the sessions that I attended. Uh, we started off with a session uh, with uh, Dr. Adam Science. He, in fact, he, he was born in, or raised in Bradford, Vermilion area, so he's a local guy. And it was just, I mean, you could hear a pin drop as he was sharing his, uh, his, his life with us. And, where he was, and one thing that stuck out to me was that, because I feel the same way, uh, teachers were the light <coughs> in the darkness of his childhood. And that, to me, was a very strong statement. And that's why our teachers are so, so important. Because uh, I, I, I share with my own children that I, I had a challenging childhood. But the minute I stepped on the school bus, it was a different world. And so I could definitely identify with him. Uh, he, he was very, very engaging. It was just really worth my trip to, to Galveston. I, had, I don't think I had been to Galveston. It was a long drive, but it was worth it. Uh, the second um, session that I attended was a community engagement in legislative advocacy. And I think that once you run for a public office, you have signed up for advocacy. Um, if you truly want to um, I guess make a, uh, not necessarily a difference, but provide the right resource for the child. You have signed up for advocacy. Be it for self-advocacy as a trustee, what do I need to do to learn more? Uh, individual advocacy, it, it's, these are the issues that I see. And system advocacy. System advocacy was so interesting to me because we cannot just sit here and say, well, this is a way it is. We, we cannot. And so you have to look at systems and, and see where that system is taking you. Where is it helping in that process? You need to be able to feel comfortable to speak to your local legislators uh, to support increased funding for, like, say for now, for example, we're, we're dealing a lot with uh, mental and behavioral health services. You need to feel comfortable to talk to your legislator. They need to know you by your first name. And if they don't know you by your first name and you don't know your legislator, then really there's no purpose in you being a school trustee. Uh, the word trustee means that they trust you, that you're going to do what you need to do. You need to be able to arrange meetings with community leaders to better educate everybody uh, and increase <coughs> access to information and data. Data doesn't lie. Data is data. So that was the second one. And the third one reminded me of Alan Moore. Uh, it was building a dynamic child nutrition program. It was uh, uh, Longview, I think it was the school. And they started, what we started, I don't know if you remember, Mr. Bionis, when we had that garden, I think it was in middle school, I mean, uh, green. <coughs> and, uh, and what they used it was to show the kids uh, actually, uh, 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 potato chips do grow on the ground as a potato first. And so it was really, really a good session. And they encouraged the schools to, to use your resources like your FFA and, and your community and to really teach the child. It wasn't so much the garden, but it was the, and they showed us a video. I mean, the kids were like, like they had never seen a, a tomato or a, a potato, it was really amazing. And so that was a very good program, I really, really, and I encourage the students if you, you know, give them a call over there. Because the kids started eating their food from a different perspective. And so that was really, really good. My favorite though, was the one with the CTE, Support for Survival over the name of the, of the session. And what it was, and I know that I hear that often from schools, we don't have the money to provide the CT, a certain pathway. We don't have the money, we don't have the money. We'll come to find out that since 2019, we have had the money in Austin. 
And so CD has been sending everybody information about what is called CCMR uh, bonus money. And that is money that's there. And I'm, I'm fixing from what I hear from Historas, this is a very difficult, not just from Historas, but from different schools, that this is very hard money to get. And so I'm, I really want to study this issue. And if it's in fact impossible to get that money to the districts, then we need to talk to our legislators. And we need to tell them, what were you all thinking? Because right now, as it is, 47% um, of our workforce <coughs> is Latinos. And yet, they're the ones that have the lowest academic achievement. So you can see why we have not been able to bring that money down. Mm -hmm. And uh, they presented a model that uh, I will give information to Ms. Torres, but basically really, uh, I need to give it to Region 1 because they presented a model where the say La Feria can't do this, but Mercedes can. So it's actually bringing the money to the valley through different school districts. Different school districts have like, for example, Harlingen has one of the best uh, uh, construction program. And I've been going on and on about that. And uh, so they can bring in the money for that. Uh, PSJA has an excellent welding program. And uh, I believe it's Brownsville has the, the auto. I know Charlie Clark has been telling me, Ms. Casas, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I know you can bring me mechanics and what have you. So it's working as a region to bring in the money to the, to the valley. And, and so to me, I mean, oh my God, this Torres has been so patient with me, educating me, because, uh, you know, all, like I shared with her, all I really want to know is what money came down and how many students were impacted. And I want to know from one year to the next year, we added two, two more students. The next year we added three more students. That's all I really, as a trustee, that's all I really need to know. The last one that I attended was building strong relationships with parents and families. And as I was uh, hearing the, the scores, it just went, it matched exactly with what they talked about. Parental engagement equals better scores, equals reduce our problems for our kids in school. And they said something that was very interesting. It said the school has to intentionally give parents the opportunity to engage. And what happens is that the child, the child's home and the school setting matches. But if if there's never that engagement, well, the child goes to a school and then they go home and what have you, so there's never really that engagement. So it's extremely important that we continue to. I got elected 28 years ago on the platform of parental involvement and I have not changed. It's just very vital to education. So again, um, I'm very, very happy that the school was able to, to pay uh, about $500 for my trip. TASB was very kind to me. They, they've known me for years. And so they were able to figure out a way where I didn't spend a lot of money. I also heard where some districts are not going to nationals, we're not going here, not going there because the budgets are so tight. So I know that our school district is going because it's gonna go percent. And I'm very proud of that. So when they come back, I, I really hope to hear a lot of new things because that's really why you go to conferences to bring, because you can say, I saw it. I saw it actually taking place. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I really, thank really you. had a good time. Any questions of Ms. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> there are two items on the consent agenda, the monthly tax report, and the, the change of board meeting date from the from April 8th to April 15th. Do I have a motion to approve the items listed on the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Mrs. Uh, Montalvo. Do I have a second? second. And a second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the items listed on the consent agenda. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same side. Motion carries. 
the next items to consider. Items to consider and possible actions are first one is a discussion and consideration to approve the 24-25 academic school year calendar. Uh, yes, good evening, board president, board members, and superintendent. The district calendar committee met to discuss it and they came up with three different calendars. At least one staff member of every campus was representative on the represented on the committee. Once the three calendars were created, a ballot was sent via email to staff to vote on the calendar. Calendars were drafted with the following. As you can see here, instructional days, staff developmental days, preparation days, and of course, reporting periods. Once ballots were taken, were, were sent, as you can see here, uh, the results indicated that the majority of the votes were for calendar number one, with 154 votes. Calendar two received 132 votes, and calendar three, 36 votes. It is a recommendation from administration for the board to approve calendar one for 24-25 academic school year. I, I know I noticed uh, most of the elementary campuses voted for calendar two, whereas the secondary campuses voted for calendar one. What is what, what was the difference? Um, calendar one begins um, on the first of, the, the staff comes back on the first and calendar two, they came back on the eighth. Oh, so and it's so later. then the, the, the elementary calendar, they stay a week later where the, the other, calendar. other one calendar, is, so end. one of them starts a week later, ends a week later, starts a week earlier, ends a week earlier. earlier I so see. I think it kind of just depends on sometimes secondary with, with things that we offer with, with um, you know, sports, yes, right. they, they choose to do that. Calendar number three was very much like calendar number one. It was my favorite, but as you can see, I lost. <laughs> but um, yes, so that was the difference really between one and two. I just wonder, because I just studied, yes. you know, that most of the maybe call them the lady campuses, elementary campuses wanted number two, and secondary they want. And I want to tell you something that all three calendars have that we're going to try this year. The last Friday in August, we have a parental contact day. We felt that it was important at the very beginning of the year to contact the parents, to have conferences with the parents, to go out and whatever we have to do to, to communicate with parents. And, and so that whole day is going to be dedicated just to setting up in the future, you know, kind of, it's kind of like when you go to the open house, you have maybe two minutes to mm -hmm. talk to the teacher. Well, this gives you that opportunity to go have a conference. What do I need to expect? What do they need to know? That kind of thing. So we'll be reaching out since staff development to set up those times with parents. So it's something new, we'll, we'll see how it works, but we're excited about that particular day. Madam President, I move that we approve option one as the 2024-2025 school calendar. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve option one as a 24-25 school calendar. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next item is discussion and consideration to vote on the Board of Directors of Region 1 Education Service Center. So each of you have ballots at the last meeting. We talked about nomination periods. There are um, There is a position open for place four, Hidalgo County, and place seven, Brooks County and Wilsey County. We did have two individuals for each that are running for those spots for the Region 1 Board of Directors. And so we did in your packets and the bios for the individuals so that you had an opportunity to look at prior till today. So if you will please make that vote and then pass them to Ms. Pettis. Um, she, she can collect that and we will send it to um, Region 1. All board members get one vote um, at Region 1 except for South Texas and they have a lot of board members but they still only get seven votes. They don't get 20 something votes. Mm -hmm. The next item is discussion and consideration to approve budget amendment number one. Thank you, Ms. Castillo, Ms. Torres, and board members. <coughs> and tonight, item 7 is discussion and consideration to approve budget, budget amendment number one. Uh, we are increasing state revenues by about $2.1 million and decreasing property revenues by $2.1 million. The net effect to the overall budget is zero. Uh, we're reclassifying state and, and local revenues due to the passage of the additional homestead exception that happened back in November 2023. 
since our budget was approved in June 2023, we need to come forward to amend the, the original budget to just kind of shift the revenues from one funding source to the other funding source. Uh, you know, we certainly recommend the approval. We do not answer any questions the board might have. Any questions, do I have a motion to approve budget number one? Madam President, I move we approve budget amendment number one. Do I have a second? I have a second by Ms. Montago. It's been moved and seconded to approve budget amendment number one. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next is discussion and consideration to approve the superintendent's performance goal 2024. Thank you, Board President. We have been looking at these goals for a couple of months. I did send them out and we discussed them at the last meeting. Um, I had some since I sent them out to you last week, called me. Um, I made some changes since last board meetings, Monday meeting. The whole purpose for me for the goals is what do we want our district to look like next year, a year from now, than it does this year. And so if you look at the main focuses, goal number one is student achievement. And we want to see, and, and, and something different we did as well, is we have two columns. Um, what is the expectation that I have for proficiency, and what is the expectation for exceptional? You'll notice that some of these don't have exceptional, because some of them, to me, I just need to do it, because it's important that next year at this time we are there, but it's not exceptional. There's nothing I can do to get exceptional. So I'm okay with that, with the fact that it's proficient because I think it's that important that it gets done. And one of those deals with facilities because I think that we need to address some of the needs. But to me, you really can't be exceptional when it comes to that. You just have to do what you do. Right. And so you'll notice that there are four or five areas that have no basis. So it's either going to be needs improvement or proficient. That's it in those particular areas. And so um, the second one addresses facility needs, and that's where a lot of the areas, there was uh, the one area that didn't have that. And then we have parental engagement, defining that a little bit different in the fact that what is parental engagement? And instead of being, and I had a discussion um, with some board members, and we talked about um, going to a meeting is not engagement. It's involvement, you go and you watch, but is that engagement? But what is engagement? And to me, engagement is that classroom instruction. That, and so if you'll look at the proficiency and the engagement, that's why I changed that a lot from where we talked about it a month ago to where it is now. And the exceptional is what do I do? Once I do that, if I give you literacy nights and if I do that, then that's above and beyond. But the other is proficient. And proficient means it's an expectation. And so that's some of the, the engagement of parental involvement there. And then the next one is a discipline plan for our, for our district. Um, something that I think that needs to be addressed district-wide is discipline, um, pre-K through 12th grade. And that's something I'm tasking myself with, um, that we will come up with a district-wide discipline plan. We will target certain areas that I think that we need to address. Um, it wasn't there last month. When we re reviewed it, I put compensation. Doesn't mean that compensation is not important for everybody that ends up watching this. I, you know, she took it off. No. But um, I believe discipline needs to be addressed. And then the last area is um, safe and secure environment. And if you look at all of those particular areas, a lot of those don't have exceptional. Mm -hmm. But I think that they were very important. Mm -hmm. Remember in the evaluation though, the superintendent, there's part one, part two, and part three. Part one is all about the scores. Part two are the performance goals. And then <coughs> part three, it's the finance, it's the community involvement. All of those things will always be on there because that's part three. So you will always expect from your superintendent to be financially stable, to have all those things. These are just above and beyond the part three, the basics. And so I did, again, thank you for the comments that I got the last few days and the adjustments that, that you know, we needed to make over the last month. And um, any questions? I do have a question. Oh, yes. You want to ask a few questions? Right? Yes, ma'am. This was under the, uh, for the whole one. Addressing academic areas that need of reading, math, science, and social studies. 
We're not talking just about the testing, Bella. We're not talking just about the STAR test. These particular ones are, well, not all of them. If you look at one and two are STAR test, number three is not tar STAR test. Um, number three right. deals with all, number four is not STAR test, and number five, but number okay. one and two are. <coughs> because, uh, you know, I'm thinking going back to that CT, uh, CCMR bonus, uh, you know, the reason that a lot of schools don't get it is because of the testing, mm -hmm. the TSI, what have you. Right. So, uh, some, somewhere, uh, improvement in that area will fall under this goal. Not under the superintendents, but under the part three. It falls underneath the part three because there's an academic and instructional part there. But it's not a specific isolated one here. TSI is it. No, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not saying specifically TSI, right. but I'm saying to show student achievement. That is, yes, that's mm -hmm. part three number. The first one of part mm -hmm. three. It's all about instruction and education mm -hmm. and that, and that falls under yes, there. Yes, because improvement in yes, that area will absolutely. show student achievement. Yes, yes, okay. that's on part three. Okay. My question, Miss, was yes, under. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not. Which goal is, is it? In I the, believe it's all. Where it says a superintendent will ensure the town hall meeting for parents and community and school safety are held. Uh, I'm reading the exceptional part. The number of parents in attendance will increase from the 20 from the 23-24 school year. I guess my question is: I know it's very difficult for some parents to attend. I mean, bottom line, they're either working right. or so. Will that count online views? I mean, because I know you do put the information that is shared at the town hall online. And, and I'm changing this up a little bit okay. because for the last, um, or I want to say two years, okay. we've done three or four town halls. We've talked about budget safety, right. but okay. we do them as a community. So this time I'm going to do one at the very beginning of the year, and okay. this year it will be because we have our own police department. I want people to, to know that, the budget, but all of the rest of them will be <coughs> campuses. So I'll we'll have one for um, Sam Houston parents, oh, for I Sanchez see. parents, for... So I think that is going to narrow it, and sometimes smaller audiences are better than large audiences, and maybe that <coughs> will get more points than when I had the large one. So we're still going to have the very first large one because I think that's important, but then I will go out to each you parent. So it, it may okay. be our chief of police with Mr. Cavazos. <coughs> it may be, it depends on what the subject is. Okay. It doesn't mean that a parent from San from Sam Houston can't go to Bell. Right. We'll announce that, mm -hmm. but I am going specifically to that campus and sometimes smaller <coughs> groups, smaller campuses, you'll go out there. And then of course, you know, if we have performances, they'll come. Mm -hmm. And so what we do with literacy nights, the performances aren't until after the speaker presents. Right. Because, you know, if not, you know, sometimes they, you know, parents don't always stay. And so that's something we're gonna try. And again, we're just trying to do everything to get that information out to parents. But we will still videotape. We'll put it on for people who want to see that. And so hopefully, we. I want more in person. Yes, we do <coughs> do the video, but I look at the in person because then you can have interaction. Right. Just with the videotape, I don't feel like you can have that question and answer and interaction. So I'm looking for more for the in person. So this particular <coughs> is going to be in person okay. that I'm looking for. Okay. And I like that you're, you're going to be campus this yes. It gives like an that. opportunity as well. Like if you get to miss it at, at time using your parent you from there, and you really wanted to, you see right. the dates of the following mm -hmm. elementary school. Another campus. It just, uh -huh. And something yeah, that I'll do is we may have a general, general topic of safety. We may have a general topic of finance. But then I'm going to do something specific for that campus. Now, that other parent may not want to hear about Sam Houston, but I'm going to talk specifically about that particular campus. If we're at the high school, there's certain things I want to discuss about the high, high school, school that not necessarily I would say at Sanchez. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're trying it. Um, to me, if you do something that doesn't work, let's change it up and let's try to do something that may work. Mm -hmm. And in a year from now, we'll find out if it works and I'll, I'll let you know it worked or it didn't work. Okay. <coughs> do you Perfect. Want to have a motion? Yes, Madam President. I move we approve the superintendent's performance goals 2024. Do I have a second? It's been moved by Ms. Johnson and seconded by Ms. Arpinas to approve the superintendent's performance goals for 2024. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries.
Uh, the next item is discussion and consideration to approve the UTRGV project MHS Access to Accessing Mental Health Services. Good evening, Board President, members of the Board, Mrs. Suarez. Tonight, we're bringing to you this grant opportunity that was provided to us by UTRGV's Mental Health Department, um, with, led by Dr. Gosso. Um, UTRGV has received a series of grants in the uh, last couple of years. This is their second phase. The second phase um, is focusing on, well, their whole grant system is focusing on mental health, school-based mental health with our region. They, they you know, research it, they know that there's a need within our region, so they're trying to increase the number of professionals that are coming from our region, and not only coming from it, but staying in our region. In years past, most mental health professions have left our region because we didn't offer opportunities for paid internships down here. Lately, we have been offering these, so they're staying here and not necessarily heading out to San Antonio, Houston, Austin, and Dallas. So that, that's the, the big push with this grant with UTRGV. Um, what they're doing with the, this funding is providing those professionals experiences down here in the Valley with school districts that are in need. And about 90% of the schools in the Valley are in need of mental health professionals. So um, this grant opportunity you know, came to us because um, Dr. Hossel is very close with one of our, with our school psychologist, Dr. Rebecca Garza. So she reached out to him, know, knows what we're doing within our district, trying to improve and put systems in place for our mental health um, overall wellness. So this grant opportunity would give us a triad of uh, mental health professional interns for the year, fully funded with UTRGV's grant money. It would consist of a school psych intern <coughs> for the year, it would consist of a, uh, a, so a master's level social worker for the first semester and then one for the second semester, and then the same thing for a school-based counselor, first semester and second semester. Um, they would fully fund it, like I said, they would pay their stipend, you know, their salary based on what the region's recommendation is, uh, which is rare, again, for interns in, in our community. So that's, again, trying to keep them here. The only thing that we as a district would have to provide is that one year of benefits for that school psychologist. So that would be a little under ten thousand dollars for you know um, insurances and stuff like that. Um, so with this grant, again, these these uh, triad of mental health professionals would be housed within our department, uh, but they would be going out to campuses based on a uh, needs assessment that we complete with UTRGV. So it can be one campus, two campuses, just depends on where the need is. Um, the whole idea of this program or you know, is that they are working in collaborative effort and that's why it's important for them to be housed with us so that they collaborate daily with each other but then going out. Um, they, don't, they don't want these professionals to be working in isolation. They should be together. Um, so again, the benefits are they fund this, um, they provide them with a stipend, they provide our supervisors with a small stipend for, their, for supporting you know, the staff. Um, they would, of course, we have access to the mental health clinicians, the UTRG, Dr. Nelson would work with our personnel, our district to provide professional development, putting systems in place, and just being that resource for us. Um, so again, th this is an opportunity that was presented to us, and you know, we discussed it, and we felt that it would be a really good way to utilize some of that funding that we received through um, um, the Valley Baptist Foundation yes. um, with Mr. Kavasso. Yes, so we thought, you know, what better way to use the $10,000 for three full-time professionals that we with this. And this will be this year, and if we want to, we can continue to do it for the additional three years that the, the UTRGB would be using um, this grant. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're asking if we approve this uh, opportunity with UTRGB. Madam President? Yes, ma'am. I move we approve UTRGB Project MHS Access 2. Assessing Mental Health Services. Do I have a second? I have a second by Mrs. Montago. It's been moved and seconded to approve UTRGV Project MHS Access to Accessing Mental Health Services. Any further discussion? Quick question. Yes, ma'am. Were yes, any other districts? Uh, yes, there are a the series area? of 10 to 12 districts that are participating in it because this, this is the second phase. So um, we are one of the smaller districts. They were doing big districts and now they're going to the smaller ones. And do you know a couple of them that they're working Yeah, with? Harlingen does it, um, Sherryland does it, Edinburgh. It, it's been the bigger districts. District. Yeah, so now she's you know, reaching out to, to the smaller folks. Awesome. Smaller awesome. <laughs> yes. Any other questions of Mrs. Kendall? Okay, Mrs. Kendall? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same side. Motion carries. 
It is now 6.54 p.m. and we are moving into closed meeting, Persons in Texas Army Code Chapter 551. <coughs> It is now 8, 6, 8 16 p.m. and we are now reconvened to open session. The board will now consider and take possible action on Mr. Keith Bauer and Mrs. Stephanie Bauer's grievance. Do I have a motion regarding Mr. Keith Bauer and Mrs. Stephanie Bauer's grievance? Yes, Madam President. I move we deny the level three grievance. Do I have a second? A second by Mr. It's been moved and seconded to deny the level three grievance. All in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. Let the record show that the level three grievance is denied. Let the record show that the superintendent approved the retirement of Ernesto Garcia and Romaldo Guerrero. Any other motions? Yes, Madam President, I move that we offer a probationary contract as discussed in closed session for the 2023-2024 school year to Michael Moore. Do I have a second? I have a motion by Ms. Johnson and a second by Mrs. Martinez to offer a probationary contract to Michael Moore. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Any other motion? Yes, Madam President. I move that we offer a one-year term and or dual contract to teachers, counselors, and librarians as discussed in closed session for the 2024-2025 school year. Do I have a second? I have a motion by Ms. Johnson and a second by Ms. Martinez to offer a one-year term and or dual contract to teachers, counselors, and librarians. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. District announcements? Yes, uh, we have um, on March 28th, we've got the Migrant Family Literacy at the new cafeteria from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We'll be having an autism walk on April 11th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at Lion Stadium. New to District Roundup will start from, will begin April the 8th and 9th at the facility. Pre-K-4 tuition begins April 15th um, and then volunteer luncheon will be held on the 25th of April at the Lee facility at 11 a.m. Any questions of Mrs. Ramos? Okay, if there is no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Mrs. Martinez. Second. I have a second by Mrs. Montazo. All in favor say aye. aye. Or sorry. Aye. Raise your hand, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all those opposed, same side. It is now. Eight motion carries. It is now eight nineteen and this meeting is adjourned.